Welcome back, everybody, to the New York Knicks, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K23. Today, we will be continuing our long-term simulation as we'll be getting through five more seasons of the series. In the last episode, we went through an additional five seasons, and that ended up being pretty interesting. We obviously started off with the Knicks winning back-to-back -back titles, but things started kind of rough for both our Knicks and Timberwolves. But over the last two seasons of the episode, both of our teams won championships. So the Knicks now have three rings in this series while Minnesota has one. We're going to get through really the rest of everybody within this core's primes. We'll be able to see how far these teams can really go, what awards these players can win. Hopefully Coco Diablo can finally make an all-star team. He's been in the league for a decade. He's been really good. Has never made one. So hopefully he can finally do that and some of these other guys can really turn into stars like Apollo Thinopoulos, Buddy Johnson, and others. The landscape of the league has drastically changed. Nikola Jokic and Giannis Antetokounmpo are now the oldest players in the NBA, which kind of just goes to show how far along we are, while the youngest player in the NBA was born in 2014. That's only a couple years before I started making content, just to put things into perspective. So as I said, we're going to get through five seasons. That means five off-seasons. And here in off-season number one, we have a long list of retirements, including Giannis, Booker, Mitchell, Jamal Murray, headlining the top of the list, Jalen Brunson, former Nick, Miles Bridges, Kelvin Johnson, Jordan Poole, a few names we know who were drafted in this series, like Christian Harris, Splash Mayo, Ochaya Baji, a few guys who were on our teams within the series, and that includes Jalen Brunson, who coming into the series was the next big free agent signing. We only had him on the roster for two years, and he was a pretty solid league guard, averaging around 15.5 points, 6.5 assists. We traded him to Atlanta for John Collins. He played mainly with Atlanta in Indiana after that, while bouncing around over his final few years. And then we've got Mayo and Abaji, two pretty solid role players. Mayo was with both the Knicks and the Timberwolves. Mayo played for the Knicks for two years. He was never on the Spurs. That season is glitched. After one season in Baltimore, we had the Timberwolves acquire him for Carl Anthony Towns. And he's been a pretty solid role player ever since, spending his final seasons in Toronto and New Orleans. So he's bounced around a little bit. And then we've got Ochai Agbaji, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. After his rookie contract ran out, we had him for one year. That was our first championship. Now, Ochai did not play in the playoffs because of a spinal injury. He played three more seasons after that on three different teams. Giannis and Devin Booker make the Hall of Fame from this class. Booker gets his number retired by the Suns, while Giannis gets his retired by both the Milwaukee Bucks and the Los Angeles Lakers. So that'll bring us to the draft lottery, and I have started to accumulate picks over the next couple of years for our teams. Look at the Timberwolves, projected at four. They end up with number two via the Los Angeles Lakers. So Minnesota, coming off a title, has the second pick in the draft. That's pretty exciting. The Knicks, meanwhile, have the next two first-rounders from the Pistons, who have been pretty bad as of recent. They still have Cade Cunningham, but the team has not really won games. So as I look at this class, I think Phil Olsen is the clear best player here. There really isn't anybody worthy of being the second overall pick. So because of that, I think it would be in Minnesota's best interest to try to get the number one pick and get Olsen. Clearly, based on some of these trade offers, the Indiana Pacers would be very willing to do it. Now, I would rather keep Jerron Cinco if I can. I'd rather trade a guy like Jamison Zander, who's already very clearly regressing. And they're going to offer us two ones for Sterling Holloway. I don't want to do that. I am willing to add some additional picks, and ultimately, I would find a deal I like. Three first-rounders, including number two, along with Xander, for the number one overall pick, and Dezo Modric, a talented role-playing forward. And then we'll get Phil Olsen out of the University of Georgia with the first pick. The last time the Timberwolves had the number one pick, they drafted another player out of Georgia. That guy has gone on to win three championships. None of which were with the Timberwolves, but that is besides the point. Olsen comes in as an 81 overall. He looks quite solid. And so that'll bring us into the 2033 free agency. We're going to accept all of the team options here. Zachary Archibald, the, I think, two-time MVP winner, declines his player option. Milo Campbell does as well. So we'll see what the Zachary Archibald market looks like. Isu Odu, Ujman Jang, DJ Johnson... Those guys are some of the free agents, along with Walker Kessler and Ramses Hussein and Enzo Valentino. So really a lot of role players. We want to keep the depth strong, especially for Minnesota. For the Knicks, I think it's pretty simple. Just run it back. 
But for Minnesota, we've got to continue to accumulate talented role players. And I think Florentino Mandrinen, the former number one overall pick, would be a good fit. He hasn't been a bust by any means, but he also hasn't really developed into a star. I think he'd be a pretty good fit on our roster. I'd also like to bring Walker Kessler back to Minnesota. I think that would make a lot of sense. Both players do accept. I was willing to let Isu Odu walk from the Knicks. I wanted him to get an opportunity elsewhere, but nobody else is really interested in him. So we're going to bring him back on a two-year minimum deal. He will return. As we take a look at the rest of the free agency results, there's a lot of good players left in there. John Morant and Zachary Archibald both return to their teams. The Sixers signed Basil Bergen Ashby. They would also sign Zion Williamson. Lamelo goes to the Bulls. Jalen Weatherspoon to the Nuggets. Nikola Jokic, after 20 years in Denver, signs with the Spurs. Jalen Weatherspoon replaces him in Denver with the Nuggets. Scotty Barnes to the Wizards. Dyson Daniels to the Lakers. And that's about it. Going into player progression, there's not a lot of green here. Everybody is in their prime for the most part. We don't have many guys regressing, though, which is cool. Chris Middleton Jr. went up a little bit. As for Minnesota, plus four for Terrence Dawson. Christy Doss is already regressing, though, at 26 years old. That's kind of young. So that'll bring us into the first season today, the sixth season of the long-term sim, and the 12th season overall. The Knicks rotation looks very similar to what it was last year. As for Minnesota, we had the number one overall pick, Phil Olson, and we also add Florentino Mandarin in, in free agency. I think this team is better than the team who won the championship last year. Now, Olson's going to end up missing a large chunk of his rookie year with a knee injury. But other than that, things are going pretty well. The Knicks are currently the two seed. The Timberwolves are currently the three seed. As we take a look at the All-Stars, Buddy Johnson makes it. We would have Apollo Thanopoulos in there as well. And that's it. We've got some contract business to work out. Jason Tatum is going to sign a two-year extension. Chris Mankiss is back for three years. Royster is extended. A lot of these guys won't be free agents until next year, but I'd rather just get it out of the way now. The Dalamani Sparks is back as well. At the end of the year, Zachary Archibald wins another MVP. Levante Ball, sixth man of the year. Tegan Crouch wins the depoy for the Memphis Grizzlies. Trey Roberts, the head coach of the Knicks, ends up winning the coach of the year. As we take a look at the All-NBA teams, Apollo Thanopoulos makes the second team. He also makes all-second team defense. We unfortunately did not have anybody else on either team, though. Phil Olson did not make a rookie team, which is weird because there's only seven rookies who made it. I don't get it, but whatever. He, did, he had a pretty good year. He averaged around... 15 points, 7 boards. He only played half the year because of his injury, but that's obviously more than enough to make an all-rookie team. I don't really see how he missed it. Buddy Johnson continues to play like an all-out superstar. Chris Mankiss averaged a double-double as well. We are seeing Jason Tatum really start to regress, though. He's not the same player he once was. So the Knicks will play the Sixers in the first round, while the Timberwolves will play against the Suns. The Sixers are led by the duo of Basil Bergen Ashby and Zion Williamson, the latter of whom comes off the bench. As for the Suns, they are not a great team, but they have a very good duo of Darius Garland and Calvin Banks, who Minnesota tried to draft a number of years back. He's turned into a star for the Suns. So the first round ended up going pretty well. Both teams won in five, and we'll move into the second round now. The Timberwolves will play against the seventh-seeded Rockets, who swept. Actually, the seventh and eighth seed in the Western Conference not only won in the first round, but swept. Now, these Rockets are not your ordinary 7th seed. We know these guys quite well. We've seen them deep into the playoffs with both the Knicks and the Timberwolves. As for the Knicks, they'll be facing off against the Bucks, led by Emery Shabazz and Diala Diallo. They've got a pretty solid squad, but they were no match for our teams. Both the Knicks and the Timberwolves would win in five. I think this is the first time that both teams make the conference championship in the same year. Could we see our two teams meet up in the finals? The Timberwolves are going to face off against the Mavericks, who are, again, not a great team, but their front court is nasty with Mobley and Chet Holmgren. The Timberwolves have played against the Mavericks a number of times in the playoffs and have never beat them. As for the Knicks, we're going up against the Hawks, led by Adeyemi Onuwaku, who's one of the best players in the league. He is not going to be healthy, though, so I really like the Knicks' chances here. I'm not as confident about Minnesota because we've never beaten the Mavericks. Things seem to be going well right now, maybe a little too well. Buddy Johnson, torn hamstring, done for the year. And then in Minnesota, Terrence Dawson, done for the year. So the good news is that both teams sweep. And look at this. Our two teams are meeting up in the NBA Finals. Albeit, we both have significant injuries, but that's besides the point. The Knicks and the Timberwolves have dominated these playoffs. They've only lost two games each. They've each won the previous two NBA championships. I have been waiting for the opportunity for these two teams to play against each other in the NBA Finals. 
That was really the goal once I started controlling Minnesota in this series. And now we get the opportunity to see these two teams face off against each other in the finals years after the big Anthony Edwards and Coco Diablo and Apollo Thanopoulos trade. So let's see how this ends up going as the Knicks win game one and they win game two and they would win game three. So the Knicks are cruising. They lead 3-0 despite the fact that their best player, Buddy Johnson, is injured. Jonathan Washburn is out for the year for Minnesota. Things are not looking good for the Timberwolves, as you can tell. Will Sim cast game four. Looks like it's a pretty close game. We are going to hop in here with a minute 17 left. The Knicks are up by one, and we will be controlling the Knicks. I feel like it's only right here. Now, if the roles were reversed and Minnesota was up 3-0, I'd probably be using Minnesota. As Chris Mankiss hits the step back three. Knicks lead it by four. Diablo inside for Apollo Thanopoulos. Guarded by Royster. Thanopoulos no good. Big defensive stop for Zachariah Royster. He would make both at the line. It's a six point game. Another shot no good. Thanopoulos out to his Voldo Lado for three. His shot is no good. Royster with the board. He is 24 and 13. And that's all she wrote. The New York Knicks win their fourth NBA championship of the series. And when we finally have our two teams face off against each other, it ends up being an all-out blowout. The New York Knicks cap off their fourth NBA title in a rivalry here over the Minnesota Timberwolves, getting the sweep by far the most dominant playoff run that the Knicks have had. Again, only losing two games. The Knicks did not lose once they made it to the conference finals after their best player, Buddy Johnson, got injured. They did not lose a game. That is insanely impressive. Ultimately, the finals MVP will end up going to Zachariah Royster, the first player in the series to have won multiple finals MVPs. And of all the people to do it, it's not like a multi-time all-star like Tatum or Edwards or Buddy Johnson. It's Zachariah Royster, who's just been a solid player for us for a while, but he seems to step up when the lights are the brightest, averaging 25, 11, and 6. A phenomenal playoff run for the Knicks, winning the NBA Finals without their best player healthy. So, so impressive. As for Minnesota, an unfortunate end here. The Timberwolves back in the Finals for a second consecutive year, and it does not quite end like it did last year. So a nice Finals win for the Knicks. We now have four championships with New York. Jason Tatum now has five rings. He can have one in each finger as we go into the retirements phase. Nikola Jokic headlines the list after one year in San Antonio. Lonzo Ball, Mitchell Robinson, former Nick. Anthony Simons, OG Anunobi, Tyler Hero, Kevin Porter Jr., Lou Gentz Dort, and even players who were drafted in this series like Zymir Donaldson. Going into the Hall of Fame is just the Joker, Nikola Jokic, whose number will be obviously retired by the Nuggets. Going into the lottery, it does not... Oh, no, look at the Knicks. They're projected to pick sixth, and they will pick sixth, thanks to the Detroit Pistons. So New York gets a lottery pick here, an interesting opportunity to add some young talent, and we're going to go with a point guard, Ken Howell, out of Syracuse, the hometown kid. The last time we drafted a Syracuse guard, it was DJ Ramses. That pick obviously turned out quite well, even if Ramses hasn't developed into the player that we hoped he would. That has obviously still been a successful pick. We also drafted Jose Reyes, not to be mistaken with the baseball player. As for Minnesota, we went with Nelson with our first round selection. He's a big man. So that'll bring us into the 2034 free agency. We're going to accept all of our team options. As we take a look at some of the players who declined their options, it's headlined by Tegan Crouch, Johnny Cotri, and Calvin Banks. This free agency class, spoiler alert, is loaded. Now, our teams really aren't going to spend because we don't really have the money to do it. The Timberwolves are going to bring back Dezo Modric and Christy Dalsa. As for the Knicks, there's nobody really to pay. Rock Khalif Dumbu is in there. He's been with Toronto the last three years. Still a really good player as we take a look at the free agency results. A lot of big-time movers. Tegan Crouch sides with Milwaukee. The Bucks get even better. Cala Dior to the Kings. Vincent Cherry Tree replaces Couch with the Grizzlies. The Pelicans continue to implode. They lose Dalen Battle to the Heat. Johnny Cotri to the Suns, Diala Diallo to the Spurs, along with other big moves. As we look at the player progression stage, more like the player regression stage, Tatum goes down by three. DJ Ramses goes up, though, as does Chris Middleton Jr. Terrence Dawson and Phil Olson go up quite a bit. Good to see Olson going up in particular. I am going to have the Timberwolves trade Terrence Dawson, though. He's 25 years old. He has a lot of value. 
I actually think Jerron Senko's the better player, though. I would rather have him as our third guard. So we're going to trade Dawson to the Cleveland Cavaliers for BJ Island. He is a stud. He's averaged close to 30 and 10 over the last three years. He was a good player for a little while at the Rockets. He's been great with the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think he could be the missing piece that turns this team into comfortably the best team in the Western Conference. The Knicks are going to run it back while the Timberwolves look even better than last year with the addition of Island. Phil Olsen will move into a sixth man role. And unsurprisingly, both teams are quite good. The Knicks are 40 and 20, while the Timberwolves are 51 and 8 with a point differential of over 20. My goodness. As we take a look at the All Stars, we've got Buddy Johnson, Apollo Thanopoulos, and Coco Diablo. Finally! I know it says he's a two time All Star. That's glitched. He's only a one time All Star. But thank goodness, he's 29 years old. He's been in the league for over a decade. And finally, he gets that well-deserved All-Star nod. We do have some contract extensions to give out. Anthony Edwards signs a big deal with the Knicks. Cesar DiCarlo is back in New York. DJ Ramses for the minimum. That's how bad he's gotten. Apollo Thanopoulos resigns in Minnesota, as does Jonathan Washburn. Jerron Cinco will as well. So as we go to the end of the year, look at this. Apollo Thanopoulos wins the MVP. His numbers have gone down compared to the last few years, but I think if you combine his defense along with the team's success, the fact that Minnesota was by far the best team in the league makes it a very well-deserved honor. Our coach would win the coach of the year, and our GM would win the executive of the year. That looks a whole lot like Eric Spolstra, though. So Apollo Thanopoulos makes the All-NBA first team, and as you can see, there are no real players on the All-NBA team. That's how far along we are. Other than Boris Forbes, the other 14 All-NBA members were drafted during the duration of the actual series. Thanopoulos made the All-Defensive first team as well as the Knicks finish in second, while Minnesota obviously finishes in first. As we take a look at the numbers, Buddy Johnson continuing to ball out. Nothing really to report here with the Knicks other than that Chris Middleton Jr. has really developed into a nice player. Osvaldo Ladeau leads the Timberwolves in scoring. We had four guys average over 20 with Thanopoulos, Island, and Coco Diablo. So the Timberwolves will play against the Nuggets, while the Knicks are going to play against the Celtics, led by Boris Forbes, one of the higher-drafted players of the long-term sim. They have Buzz Wigington III. They have a couple recognizable names in the backcourt, but other than that, not a whole lot of guys we know. As for the Nuggets, they're led by Jalen Witherspoon and Jaden Mokebell. The rest of the roster doesn't really scare me too much as both teams would end up winning pretty easily. And in the second round now, the Timberwolves will play against the Clippers, while the Knicks will play against the Bucks. The Bucks have a good team of Tegan Crouch leading the way. He might be the best player in the entire league right now. They also have Emery Shabazz is really good. Their backcourt, a couple of guys we know with Skylar Fields and Rock Khalif Dumbu, who have both played with our teams, and they also have Ahmed Kabongo, who has played with both the Knicks and the Timberwolves. As for Minnesota, they'll be going up against the Clippers, led by John Ari Cotchery Jr. and Jamero Jetson. This is a pretty solid Clipper team. Could end up being a challenge. And, well, it was not a challenge. The Timberwolves swept while the Knicks went in five. And our teams might play against each other again in the finals. The Knicks are going up against the Red Tails in the conference finals, led by Seth McRobert, Pasquel Baccaro, and Jaden Ivey. Minnesota will be going up against the Trailblazers, led by Luka Doncic, Shaden Sharp, and Maximus Grand, the latter of whom is the highest-rated player on their team. Minnesota seems to be taking care of business. The Knicks, though, not so much. They're just kind of struggling with the Red Tails as Minnesota officially moves on to the finals. They win in five. As for the Knicks, they trail 3-2 to two against Baltimore as we simcast Game 6. It's not looking good. The Knicks end up losing to Baltimore. We will not have a rematch. I mean, actually, this is a rematch. These teams played in the finals two years ago, but we won't have a rematch of our two teams. So we split the first two. The Red Tails win game three. Minnesota wins game four. And then the Red Tails win game five. Uh-oh. The Red Tails could win the finals here. They're not going to do it in game six. It doesn't look like. Yeah, Minnesota's going to win this one pretty easily. So that'll bring us into a game seven. The Timberwolves certainly do not want to lose two NBA finals in a row. Let's see if they can beat the Red Tails for a second time within the last three years. The first game seven in around a decade and just the second since 2016. The legendary 3-1 lead comeback with Cleveland and Golden State. So this game seems to be close, although the Red Tails had the edge. Now we had the edge. Now Baltimore does. They've outscored us by 17 in the fourth, and they lead by eight with two minutes to go. So we've got to hop in and basically save our season. McRobert inside for Josh Christopher. He's in for the layup, and the Red Tails lead it by 10. 
It's not looking good here for Minnesota. They're hanging on by a prayer. Here's Diablo inside for Apollo Thanopoulos. Quick layup, and the lead is back within eight. Jaden Ivey with it, the longtime Piston. He's going to lob it up for Seth McRobert, the face of this Red Tails team. Ten-point game, McRobert, step back, three ball, dagger! McRobert wins the finals for the Baltimore Red Tails as they will win 153-140 to here in Game 7. The Timberwolves have lost back-to-back -back NBA championships while the Baltimore Red Tails win their first in team history. So this certainly sucks. The Red Tails eliminated both the Knicks and the Timberwolves in one year. Seth McRobert ends up winning the finals MVP, and even though it, it is unfortunate that Minnesota lost, this is still a pretty cool story. The Red Tails were an expansion team within this series. The very first player they drafted was Seth McRobert, who has become the face of their team. McRobert was a star really instantly after they drafted him. He's developed into a very good player, and here in Game 7, he finished off with a 34-point triple-double, including the Dagger 3, and he will end up winning the Finals MVP as he continues to build himself a Hall of Fame resume here at the age of 30, averaging 28, 7, and 8 through the finals. So a pretty cool story with McRobert and the Red Tails winning, even though it screws over our team. That'll bring us into the offseason with Cat, B.I., DeJounte Murray, De'Aaron Fox, Trey Young, Ben Simmons, Colin Sexton, and Zion Williamson headlining the list of retirements. There's a few names we recognize. There's Jamison Zander, former Timberwolf, Roman Bokeman, Woozy Bailey, guys who were drafted within this series. R.J. Barrett is here as well. Barrett had a pretty solid career with the Knicks. I feel like you guys kind of underrated his role on this team. He was a really solid player. We eventually traded him to the Pelicans for the draft pick that ended up being Buddy Johnson. So obviously trading him away was the right call because we traded him for a future Hall of Famer. But he was still a really solid player within this series. And if not for RJ Barrett, we would have never gotten Buddy on the team. Nonetheless, hats off to Barrett. He was the initial face of our team. Cat and Trey Young make the Hall of Fame. They get their jerseys retired along with Zion Williamson. That'll bring us into the draft lottery. The Knicks are projected to finish with the third pick in the draft because the Pistons are a poverty franchise. I can say that because they're my team. And the Knicks end up getting pick six. So now there are some interesting options in here. We can get Joel Embiid Jr. That would be kind of funny. But really, there isn't anybody I'm all that tempted by, so we're going to trade this pick to the Kings for two future first-rounders. Now, the Kings have Khalid Dior, who's really good, so I'm not all that confident in those picks, but Dior's coming off a torn Achilles, and the rest of their roster is not all that good. And it ended up being a pretty interesting draft, with Giannis Antetokounmpo Jr. going third to the Raptors. Wow, he really looks just like Giannis. So Giannis Jr. goes to Toronto, while Joel Embiid Jr. goes to the Spurs. Neither of our teams had any high picks as we go into the offseason with free agency. Adeyemi Onuaku in Atlanta will decline his player option. He could be potentially joining his third NBA team. Our free agents include Isu Odu, BJ Island. Gotta bring him back for sure if we had the money, which we should because he's on bird rights. It looks like Minnesota's going to have enough for him along with potentially bringing back Kessler and Cook. And sure enough, he would sign a five-year extension. The Knicks are going to bring their guys back, Cam Reddish, Sherman Thornton, and Isu Odu, so those guys will all end up returning to the squad. I accidentally skipped through the rest of free agency, but it ended up being a pretty big free agency. So, with the important moves that happened, uh, the biggest ones were Adeyemi Onwaku. He ends up signing with the Bucks. We're going to talk about that one in more detail in a second. Imani Juno goes to the Pelicans. Christopher Killebrew resigns with the Jazz. He originally signed with the Rockets, but then switched at the last second. But let's talk about the Bucks real quick, because they have Tegan Crouch and Adeyemi Onuaku, who are two of the best players in the league. They did lose Emery Shabazz, but that team is going to be scary. What's also going to be scary is the ascension of Chris Middleton Jr. He's now an 84 overall. He's better than Jason Tatum in terms of rating at this point. As we enter the third season of the day... The Knicks, again, running it back for the most part. The Knicks have not won a championship yet in this episode, so we could certainly use one. The Timberwolves are going to run it back as well after their heartbreaking Game 7 loss in the NBA Finals. So we will simulate through the year, and Cesar DiCarlo breaks his vertebrae out for the year. That's not good. DiCarlo is a guy who's had some serious injuries in the past. Medical was always the concern with him, and he's done a really good job of staying healthy, so this freak injury really sucks. What does not suck, though, is the fact that our teams are really good. 
The Knicks are 45 and 13, while the Timberwolves are 42 and 18. As for our All Stars, Buddy Johnson is back, Apollo Thanopoulos is back, and Coco Diablo is back as a starter. That's pretty cool. For contract extensions, Buddy Johnson's a free agent this offseason. He has to come back, which he does. Jason Tatum is extended. Zachariah Royster is extended. The Dalamani Sparks is extended. We cannot pay Chris Middleton Jr. yet, though. Coco and Isvaldo re-signed in Minnesota, along with Florentino Mandrinen. And so now we can simulate to the end of the season. Zachary Archibald wins, I think, his fourth MVP, if I got my number correct. That's a lot, in case you can't count. Trey Roberts wins Coach of the Year for the Knicks. That's cool. What's also cool is Buddy Johnson makes the All-NBA first team. Very exciting. No Timberwolves, though. That's unfortunate. Coco, Apollo, and Buddy all make the All-Defensive second team. Defense wins championships, kids. Both of our teams were the one seeds. Minnesota wins 60 games, while the Knicks win 63. Could we have our two teams meet up in the finals? Again, it's certainly possible. Another strong year for Minnesota. Our four best players all averaged over 20. Buddy Johnson continues to be awesome. Chris Mankiss is great. Anthony Edwards really has not regressed at all, unlike Jason Tatum. So the Knicks are going to play against the Bulls. They've got a good backcourt with LaMelo Ball and Dorian Dippery. The rest of this team, not all that good, though. They do have former Timberwolf, A.J. Griffin, who has probably played on every NBA team at this point. Minnesota's going to play against the Jazz with Christopher Killebrew. I don't see how this team is an 8 seed. That's a really good Utah team, but clearly they were no issue for us as we end up getting the sweep. Both teams actually got the sweep. But Osvaldo Lado tore his meniscus. He's done for the year. But Cesar DiCarlo is back from his vertebrae injury. So the Knicks are healthy, but the Timberwolves are not. The Knicks will play against the Celtics in the second round. Pretty much the exact same team that we saw last year. While Minnesota will play against the Clippers. Again, pretty much the exact team that we saw last year. Things ended up going pretty well for the healthy Knicks. They're up 3-1, to one, but the Timberwolves are down 3-1 to one against the Clippers. Minnesota's made it to the finals three years in a row. I would certainly hate to see the streak come to a close. And it's not going to happen in Game 5. We win by 32. That'll bring us into Game 6 now. Minnesota, again, seems to have the edge. And it looks like we're going into a Game 7. We're in a really good spot. We've got the momentum. We're coming off of two blowout wins. And we're at home. We seem to have the edge in Game 7. But the Clippers are still in it. Back and forth late. We're going to hop in with a minute 44. The game tied at 133. Let's see if the Wolves can get the job done here in Game 7. Johnny Contrary Jr. inside for the lead over Coco Diablo. Those two talented guards, both in the same draft class together. Here's Diablo with it on the wing. Gets the screen. Diablo on the move for the tie. 135 apiece with a minute to go. Contrary back with it, with the screen. Contrary inside for the big man who passes it out rather than taking the shot. That'll leave Contrary open in the corner for the lead. Johnny Contrary Jr. hits the three. And the Clippers are ahead by three. Here's Diablo for the tie. He misses it and the Clippers get the board. Following LA possession now. Jetson heavily contested three is no good. But Messerly grabs the board and is fouled by Cinco. That one is on Apollo Thanopoulos. You've got to get that rebound. And that might have costed the Timberwolves their season. Messerly makes both of the line. And the Clippers are ahead by five. Diablo in the corner. Quick shot. No good. And the Timberwolves are not looking too good right now. 146 to 140 is your final. The Minnesota Timberwolves will not be making it to the finals for a fourth consecutive season. And instead, a new team in the Western Conference will be representing themselves in the finals. It'll be either the Clippers or the Grizzlies. BJ with 29, Thanopoulos with 23 and 10, Diablo with a 20, 16 and 10 triple-double, but it's not enough to get the job done. So now all the focus is on the Knicks, who are facing off against Milwaukee in the conference finals. We talked about this team early with Tegan Crouch and Adeyemi Onuwaku. They still have Rock Khalif Dumbu, but the rest of their roster is not very good. But they don't need it to be because they have the two highest-rated players in the entire game. The Bucks win Game 1, as Vidal Monty Sparks is out for the year. The Bucks win Game 2. Luckily, we win Game 3, but we lose Game 4. The Timberwolves nearly came back down 3-1. to one. We'll see if the Knicks maybe can come back down 3-1 as well. As this game's looking kind of close, we outscored them by around 30 in the first quarter. And now we're up by two with a minute to go. The Bucks can tie it now. It's Onuwaku with the slam over Buddy Johnson. We are tied at 140. 
Here's Buddy Johnson with it. He wants the ball. He's the star. Johnson is fouled by Woody Balksheimer. That is his sixth foul. He's out of the game. Buddy would make both of the line. It is a two-point lead. Here is Dunn with it inside. Pull up jumper for the tie. We're not enough at 142. Buddy wants the ball. He wants the smoke. Guarded by Onuwaku. Johnson blows by him. Buddy with the reverse slam for the lead. Buddy Johnson wants the ball in these big time situations and now the Bucks can potentially send themselves to the finals or tie it. Onuwaku, no good. Grabs his own rebound and gets the punt back at the buzzer. This game is headed to overtime if it counts. We've got to look at it though. And as you can see, this is a photo finish right around now. Clock hit zero. Ball is still in his hands. Knicks win it. But we still got to win two more. We're still down three to two. We can't get too excited. That starts with game six on the road. And it looks like we're going to get the job done. Yes, we do. We win by 21. That'll bring us into game seven with the Clippers waiting in the finals. Can the Knicks come back down 3-1 unlike Minnesota? Short answer, yes. We won by a lot. Buddy Johnson wins the conference finals MVP as we win by 48 to be exact. 27 for Tatum. He turns back the clock. And now we've got the Clippers in the conference finals. They just beat Minnesota in seven games in the second round. So we already know what this team looks like. The Knicks win the first two games. They also win the third game. Oh boy, we could be looking at a blowout. We'll see if the New York Knicks can get the job done. And it looks like they will. It is a 22-point game with 20 seconds left. So we're going to watch the clock run out. And there you go. The New York Knicks have won another NBA championship as they defeat the Los Angeles Clippers in a clean four-game sweep. The New York Knicks have now won five NBA championships with this core. Jason Tatum himself now has six rings, tying the great Michael Jordan's mark. A big milestone here for the Knicks. Ring number five, and Buddy Johnson will win the finals MVP. Buddy Johnson's been the best player on this team at this point for around five years, yet he has not won a finals MVP until right now, continuing to cement a Hall of Fame resume as he finishes the elimination game with 25, 13, and 5. A great moment for young Buddy Buckets. Well, I guess he's not young anymore. He's 30. He's been in the league for 10 years, and he's won five championships in those 10 years. If it wasn't clear already, the New York Knicks have become a dynasty here through the late 2020s and early 2030s, as they have won half of the previous 10 championships. Looking at the retirements, we've got Jalen Brown, Bam, Aiton, Luka, Jaron Jackson, amongst others. Levi Beauregard retires, ironically, with the Nets. Alonzo Corbett, former Timberwolf, retires, and some other recognizable names there down the board. Luka Doncic and Bam Adebayo make the Hall of Fame. Luka gets his number retired by both the Blazers and the Mavericks, while Bam gets his retired by the Nets. Going into the lottery, we do not have any lottery picks. We do get pick 18, though, from the Kings. We, as in the Knicks. Todd Garnett goes number one overall to the Washington Wizards. He looks very, very good. Kind of similar to Kevin Garnett, minus the fact that they're clearly not related at all. They had the same last name, and they both play the four. The Knicks had two ones. We got McCarthy at pick 18, while Minnesota held on to their picks, grabbing a couple of young guys as well. And the Knicks drafted this kid, Wheeler. He's 17 years old. He was born in 2018. That's how far along we are. We're drafting kids born in 2018. I was already making content by then. We've got a few interesting players in free agency, including four-time MVP, Zachary Archibald, who obviously headlines the list, along with another former MVP in Monteo Moore Jr., the Knicks got to make sure they can bring back Chris Middleton. That's priority number one. And he does accept a five-year, $212 million extension while Minnesota brings some guys back as well. Now, unfortunately, I noticed in the last episode that there is a glitch with signing restricted free agents. So Chris Middleton will only sign a one-year extension. He'll be a free agent again next year. The biggest mover here in free agency was definitely Zachary Archibald, the four-time MVP winner with the Heat, leaves for the Indiana Pacers. Now, the Heat do sign... Humphreys instead. He's not as good as Archibald, but I guess he can soften the blow a little bit. The other big movers include really nobody else. Pretty much everybody else here stayed with their teams as far as I'm aware. So pretty quiet free agency here for the most part, other than Zachary Archibald, which I guess is a very big deal. Jason Tatum goes down three. He is now an 80. He is really regressing fast. Tatum is now the oldest player in the entire league for what it's worth. 
while Minnesota remains relatively untouched. So the Knicks have too many players on the roster. We're going to trade three guys who we would have cut otherwise for the Wizards' first round pick. And then with Minnesota, we're going to do the same, acquiring a future first in 2040 from the Jazz. That'll bring us into the fourth season of the day. The Knicks have won two championships here in this episode. We'll see if they can potentially grab a third. As for Minnesota, it's clear they are very close. The Timberwolves have made three of the last four finals. And what we're going to do this year is we're going to have BJ Island start at the three, Olsen start at the four, and Jonathan Washburn come off the bench. So Jason Tatum ended up suffering a dislocated left patella. He's out for the year, and that could possibly end his career with him being 38 years old. So if that is it for him, that would be rather unfortunate of a way to, you know, end it. And then Cesar DiCarlo suffers a season-ending spinal injury. And this is coming off last year where he broke his vertebrae. So that's like back-to-back spinal-related injuries. That's really bad. What's not really bad is that our two teams have a number one seed. The Timberwolves are 30-1 and at home. We would have our regular All-Stars, Buddy Johnson, Coco Diablo, Apollo Thanopoulos, and even Anthony Edwards makes it. He has not made it in a while. As for contracts, Jonathan Washburn signs a two-year extension. Jerron Senko signs for two more years. Chris Mankiss is back for three years. We can't pay Chris Middleton yet, though. So Cesar DiCarlo ends up returning early from his injury, as just Jason Tatum, because our medical staffs are really, really good. But the fun does not last for long. Osvaldo Lado tears his MCL right before the playoffs. He will likely miss the first couple of rounds. As we take a look at the end of the season, Monteo Moore Jr. with the Sonics wins another MVP. I think he's at two or three at this point. I don't know the exact number, but he's definitely won a couple. Vincent Cherry Tree wins the Depoy. He's developed into a phenomenal player with the Warriors and now the Grizzlies. We have Coco, Buddy, and Apollo on the All-NBA second team, and the three of them all make the All-Defensive second team as well. So both of our teams ended up finishing quite highly in the standings as the number one seeds in our respective conferences. 63 wins for the Knicks and 70 for the Timberwolves. This Minnesota team was dominant. This really feels like it could be their year. If anyone's going to stop them, though, it's probably going to be the Knicks. Chris Middleton Jr. was the number two scorer. He's basically become the second option here behind, obviously, Buddy Johnson. So the Knicks will play against Atlanta here in the first round. This Hawks team no longer has Adeyemi Onuwaku, of course, so it's pretty much the same team without him, while Minnesota will face off against the Denver Nuggets. This team is pretty solid, led by Jalen Witherspoon. I think we can beat them, though. Minnesota gets the sweep, while the Knicks win in six. So the Knicks are going to play against the Red Tails. Oh, God, here we go again. They are pretty much the same team that they've been, led by Seth McRoberts. The Red Tails seem to always beat us, whether it's the Knicks or the Timberwolves, they always win. As for the T-Wolves, they'll be going up against the Monty Juno and the New Orleans Pelicans, who have a pretty solid squad themselves. The Dollar Monty Sparks is out for the year as the Timberwolves sweep the Pelicans. The Knicks are going to head to seven with Baltimore, and the Red Tails are off to a phenomenal start, and it looks like they're going to end up winning this game. They end up winning by 30. So the Baltimore Red Tails continue to own our teams. So they'll be going to the conference finals against the Heat, and now it's up to Minnesota. They'll be going up against the Clippers for a rematch. It's time to get revenge from last year, and revenge we would get. Osvaldo Lado, who has not been healthy through the entire playoffs, is back as we sweep them, and we'll be going up against the Miami Heat. Now, this is interesting because the Miami Heat have had Zachary Archibald, who's been the best player, I think, in the league. He leaves, and then they make the finals, which is weird. Now, this Minnesota team has been dominant. They're 12-0 in the playoffs, and that's been without Osvaldo Lado. He is now healthy. Imagine what this team can do with him. Let's see if the Timberwolves can get the sweep and become the first team in NBA history to completely sweep their way through the entire playoffs, and it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. We're up 3-0. We're going for the sweep in Miami. Now, the Heat have the lead. Can we get it back? It looks like we will. It's a close game, and we're going to hop in. Right now, we're up by 7 with 17 seconds to go, and there you have it. The Minnesota Timberwolves with their second NBA championship of the series. We lost two finals with Minnesota earlier in the episode, and now finally we get the job done beating the Miami Heat, winning ring number two. This one is especially special because this team was truly dominant going 16-0 and in the playoffs, and the first three rounds we're done without Osvaldo Lado, who is one of our most important players 
on the roster. And that just goes to show how good this team is. And this team is forever going to be one of the greatest teams in the history of the NBA. They won 70 games, got the number one seed, and they did not lose a single game in the entirety of the playoffs, wrapped up by a sweep of the Miami Heat. And it looks like the big fella, Apollo Thanopoulos, will win the NBA Finals MVP, the Greek Freak 2.0, wins his second championship and his first Finals MVP, adding to his potential Hall of Fame resume at the age of 30. Our teams continue to win. We have won three of the four championships in today's episode. Minnesota finally gets another ring, and again, doing it in dominant fashion, going 16-0 in the playoffs. That is absurdly good. So that'll bring us into the final season of the day. Retirements include John Morant, Isaac Okoro, Cam Reddish, we'll get to him in a second, Sadiq Bey, Franz Wagner, Jaden McDaniels, Keegan Murray, Ty Ty Washington, Wendell Moore, former Nick, I think Ahmed Kabongo, former Nick, and Timberwolf was in here. But we've got to show love to the man, the myth, the legend, Killa Cam Reddish. And this isn't just really for the next series, but this is over the last three years on this channel. Cam Reddish has been on our NBA series in some form since October of 2020. We traded for him in the very first trade deadline of the Cavs franchise in 2K21. We kept him the entire time. Then last year with the Sonics, he was our number one pick in the expansion draft. And then here with the Knicks, he's been on the team the entire time, is a five-time NBA champion. Obviously, in real life, Cam Reddish plays for the Lakers. They are not one of the 10 teams that I am considering for 2K24, which, by the way, if you've not voted, the link is in the description. You should probably vote. But what a journey it has been with Cam Reddish. Who knows? Maybe we'll trade for him in the 2K24 series, but no matter what, we will not start with Cam Reddish on the team. It'll be the first time, again, since October of 2020 that Cam Reddish is not on our squad. So maybe this will be the last time I say this, but hats off to Killa Cam Reddish. Jaden McDaniels is here as well. He has been with the Timberwolves his entire career, and he was the only player with the Timberwolves who we kept. Obviously, we traded away Anthony Edwards, then we traded away Carl Anthony Towns, but McDaniels stuck around. Both Reddish and McDaniels have only really been here for the vibes over the last few years as John Morant is a Hall of Famer, spending his entire career with the Grizzlies, getting his jersey retired as well. No Cam Reddish. I thought maybe we'd see him in the jersey retirements, but he averaged like eight points a game in his career, so I get it. As for the draft lottery, the Knicks had the eighth pick from the Washington Wizards, and I noticed immediately this draft class is booty cheeks. I do not want these three first-round picks. Get them off my hands. I tried to trade for Calvin Banks from the Suns. It didn't work, so instead we're going to get two first-rounders from the Suns next year, one of which is from Toronto. Both the Suns and the Raptors are not all that good, as Jalen Brown Jr. is picked. Wow, that looks just like his father. The Knicks would draft Mikael Bridges Jr. with the 31st pick in the second round. The amount of juniors we've had is kind of weird. Obviously, Chris Middleton Jr. here as well. We've got to pay Chris Middleton Jr. this offseason. Tegan Crouch, Khaled Dior, and Dalen Battle are amongst the players who are going to decline their options, leading into free agency. Although it would be tempting to sign one of those guys, Chris Middleton Jr. is the top priority. We're going to look to bring back Isu Odu. And then Minnesota's got to pay Phil Olsen as well. We're not going to give him an extension now. What we're going to do is we're going to wait for him to accept one of these other offers and then match them. So the Knicks re-sign Chris Middleton, and then we're going to match this three-year $90 million deal for Olsen. As we take a look at the free agency results, Tegan Crouch is a Denver Nugget. Khaled Dior is a Washington Wizard. And then replacing Tegan Crouch on the Bucks is Seth McRobert. I can't see him in any other jersey other than the Red Tails. The fact that he left that team is crazy. How did the Red Tails not like give him a lifetime contract? I don't get it. Jalen Witherspoon is a Spur. LaMarcus Aldridge Jr. is a Clipper. Nikolai Shevchenko is a Bull. And that's about it. There's a whole lot of red here in the player regression phase. Everybody on the Knicks is getting worse. Tatum goes down by four. It's over. As for Minnesota, there's like no red. Apollo Thanopoulos is still getting better. He goes up two. So that'll bring us into the final season today. And I feel like both teams are in very different direction. The Knicks are very clearly getting older. Everybody is starting to regress, and eventually we may need to get a new star. Buddy Johnson is still absolutely good enough to be the number one option on a championship team, but I'm not sure how much longer that's going to last. He hasn't really regressed too much, 
but realistically, it's bound to happen. As for Minnesota, I feel like this team is hitting their peak. They won 70 games last year. They did not lose a single game in the playoffs, and they're not really getting worse. The Minnesota Timberwolves feel like the team to beat right now. Minnesota only has two rings compared to the next five, but I feel like the Timberwolves could very well catch up pretty quickly. My hypothesis is... Hypothesis is... That's not a word. My hypotheses... That's probably not a word either. My hypothesis about both teams has been proven to be correct so far. The Timberwolves are playing really well, while the Knicks are under 500. The Knicks are the five seed because the East is awful, but the Knicks seem to be getting worse a little bit. Jason Tatum appears to be looking towards retirement in the offseason. That looks especially likely. We would have Buddy Johnson, Coco Diablo, and Apollo Thanopoulos back in the All-Star game once again. As for contracts, Anthony Edwards signs an extension, DeCarlo is extended, Royster is extended, Sparks is extended, Tatum can't because he is planning to retire, and then DJ Rams is, is as well. As for Minnesota, Apollo Thanopoulos resigns, as does Mandrinin. Adeyemi Onowaku wins the MVP for the Milwaukee Bucks, his second, his first one he won eight years ago. That's an impressive level of consistent high play because he's been an MVP caliber player over that entire eight plus year stretch. As we look at the All-NBA teams, on the third team, we've got Coco, Buddy, and Thanopoulos. I love how the three of those guys are always on the same All-NBA teams together. That's kind of cute. Coco makes the All-Defensive second team as the Knicks are the four seed. We played a lot better the second half of the year, mainly because everybody didn't get hurt. The Knicks were basically a retirement home in the first half of the year. I think there was a new injury just about every three seconds with this team. But for the most part, the team is pretty healthy going into the playoffs, as are the Minnesota Timberwolves, who are the clear favorite to win their second consecutive title. As we simulate the play-in, the Knicks will rematch with the Miami Heat, who are pretty much the same team that they were last year, who of course made the finals. While the Timberwolves are going to play against the Jazz. Again, I don't know how this team is an 8 seed. They have four players who are at least an 87 overall. This is not your ordinary 8 seed. The last time we played them, we swept them, but this time they played much more to their level of play. Both teams are actually headed to a Game 7. We'll start with the Knicks here against Miami. It looks like New York is going to get the job done, and they will. We're moving to the second round with Chris Middleton Jr. leading the way. Minnesota does not want to lose as a number one seed. So hopefully we can get the job done. The game appears to be quite close. Utah with the lead. Minnesota comes back here in the fourth. And the Timberwolves will get the job done. Avoiding the upset against the number eight seeded Utah Jazz. With Phil Olsen leading the way with 32. Going into the second round. The Knicks will play against the number one seeded Atlanta Hawks. I have no clue how this team is the one seed. They're not that impressive. Their best player is an 85 overall G.J. Gardner. The Timberwolves will play against the Clippers again, third time's the charm, and clearly that ended up being the case so far because the Timberwolves lead 3-2, the Hawks lead 3-2 against the Knicks. I get, I don't know how this Atlanta team is good, their roster does not scare me, but maybe I shouldn't have been trash-talking them because they won by 10. So the New York Knicks are eliminated. But the Timberwolves do win their Game 6, and we'll go against the Sonics in the Conference Finals. They have held on to their big three of Monteo Moore, Josh Giddy, and Noah Kogan. Those three have been together in Seattle since the beginning of the long-term sim for over a decade. I'm surprised the Sonics have not consistently been like a great team in this series, because those three guys have all been very good. Let's see if Minnesota can make it back to the Finals as we lose Game 1. We win Game 2, but... Coco Diablo suffers a season-ending knee injury. We win Game 3, lose Game 4, win Game 5. Osvaldo Lado is basically out for the year as we win Game 6, and we're going to the finals against the Bucks. but we're going to be without our starting backcourt. That's not good. As we look at the Bucks, they, of course, are led by Seth McRobert, who they just signed. They have Rakhalif Dimbu, and that's just about it. At first, I was very confused. Where is everybody else? How is Dimbu and McRobert carrying a finals team? These guys are obviously really good players, but I was quite confused at first. And then I realized they have Adeyemi Onuwaku, the reigning MVP, who is out for the rest of the year. He got injured in Game 2 of the first round. So Seth McRobert has carried the Bucks through the entire playoffs into the finals. Now, unfortunately for him, we are up 3 to nothing, and it seems like we're finally going to beat Seth McRobert. The key was that he does not play for the Red Tails anymore. Let's see if we can beat him in Game 4, going for the sweep. Tied at 146 with two minutes to go. 
Thanopoulos with the size mismatch. He's guarded by McRobert, and he will take advantage. Apollo Thanopoulos probably deserves a ton of credit considering he has carried the Timberwolves through the finals without their two-star guards. Phil Olsen hits the three. Minnesota up by three. Here's Jose Ramirez over to McRobert for the tie. It's good! Seth McRobert knots this one up at 151 with a minute to go. Minnesota with it back. Jerron Cinco back out to Olsen. Another three ball. Bang! Phil Olsen comes up clutch once again. Three point game. Here is Ray Hendricks inside. He is blocked. Olsen snuffs it off the backboard. In transition, the big fella, Apollo Thanopoulos, looking to make it a two score game. He's no good. Olsen with the rebound. He misses. Gets another rebound. And Phil Olsen gets the put back. It's a five-point lead for Minnesota. Lead is now at three with Jerron Senko at the line as he misses the first three throw, and he misses the second one. Oh, boy. The Bucs can tie it. It's in the hands of, of course, Seth McRobert. Off the screen, McRobert heaves up a prayer, and it is good! A prayer answered for Seth McRobert, and now Senko will bring it up. The Timberwolves can win the finals right here. Jerron Senko for the championship. It is no good. And we are going to overtime. We do not have a winner here in game four of the finals in regulation. And in overtime, it looks like the Timberwolves are going to run away with it. We are going to outscore the Bucks 21-4. to That was easy enough. Apollo Thanopoulos will dribble out the clock. And there you go. The Minnesota Timberwolves have swept the Milwaukee Bucks. They win their second consecutive NBA championship and their third within the series. I said before the season, they're going to be catching up to the Knicks. New York has five rings while the Timberwolves have three. Interestingly, both teams have made the finals five times. New York is an undefeated 5-0, and while Minnesota is back over 500 at 3-2. and And this championship was won without both Coco Diablo and Osvaldo Lido, our two star guards. As Apollo Thanopoulos wins the finals MVP, him and BJ Island, I don't want to say they did it on their own, but those were the only two star players we had healthy. Those guys obviously stepped up. The role players like Phil Olsen and Jerron Cinco obviously stepped up as well. Thanopoulos wins his second finals MVP. That's back to back finals MVPs for the 31 year old Greek big man. Unlike last year, though, the Timberwolves did have some trouble early in the playoffs, but not in the finals as we sweep the Bucs. It's the third straight finals with a sweep. And actually, all four championships that our teams won today were all by sweeps. And then the one that the Red Tails won against Minnesota, of course, went to seven games. So that'll wrap up the episode. A very successful one is the Timberwolves and the Knicks both win two championships. We presumably see the end of the career of Jason Tatum, who is expected to retire. In the next episode, we will go over his retirement, and we will be going over everybody's retirement because the next episode is the series finale. We will go as long as we need to to wrap up everybody's careers and give this series the proper ending that it deserves. I hope everybody enjoyed the episode. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.